Good everyone, my name is Derek. Uh, welcome to Custom Craft and Adventure. Uh, so this time I'm going to show you how to build a canopy. Uh, not from experienced person, because this is actually my first time building a canopy. And I'm actually not even sure if this will work. Um, it's been around six months planning this canopy. Uh, I designed it myself uh, and I've done research, watched a couple of videos about canopy and I've got this idea. Uh, so the whole idea of this canopy is a convenience. Uh, instead of having a small canopy, taking everything out, uh, your swag and your stuff, uh, when you arrive at campsite, spend half an hour setting up, uh, you actually go there uh, a canopy as a camper. So you you, you get there uh, and basically, well, let's say if it's late at night, uh, you pop up the, the camper and it's ready to use. Uh, and in the same time, when you are leaving a campsite, uh, you don't have to spend half an hour uh, putting things back together. So basically it's a 30 second sort of thing. Um, there is another thing I need um, I need to consider is that the payload of my car. So it's a 2017 Mitsubishi Triton. Uh, the, the, the weight of the car is the biggest enemy. Um, so to build a canopy on top of it, it is quite challenging. Now I'll briefly show you my design. So this is what I've been using. It's a very simple free software called SketchUp. Uh, if you know a bit of computer, it shouldn't be too hard to start using. Uh, so that obviously represents the car. Uh, and I've taken some measurement, that should be a Triton's measurement. Um, and it basically is a half canopy of a box. Uh, and the length of the tray should go all the way from here to there. So this canopy is around 1200 mil in length. Uh, it's a pretty wide canopy, uh, it's 1890 in width. Um, it's really taken uh, the limit of the, the width of the car. And now the top bit, you see that sort of extends to the front of the cap. Uh, that is basically where we sleep. Uh, and when we reach the campsite, that whole thing basically pops up uh, and it becomes a room. Um, and basically in this 1200 by 1890 uh, square meter area, is our sort of camping living room. Uh, so we basically, we, if there's too many flies we can sit in, uh, well, we still don't know what sort of th things we'll do in there, but at least it is a bit of a room that we can stay in and we go camping. Uh, so that stick represents a human, by the way. Um, so that's basically my design, and I'm not even sure if this will work. Uh, I hope this works out okay, um, but Look, I, there is nothing for me to lose. Uh, all these materials spent me around uh, eleven, day. yeah, eleven hundred, yeah. eleven hundred, and I probably, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll give it a go. Uh, so this project, back me. So this project basically uh, is a pretty big project. Uh, I've divided the project into uh, into few. Uh, steps. So basically in the first step I'll uh, build a frame and uh, uh, even the frame itself is a pretty big frame. I'll probably do the main body first and then I'll build uh, the top level separately uh, and then zap them together fully welded uh, and then we consider sheeting and, and all the additions, the canvas and that sort of stuff and see if it works. Uh, the whole framework altogether is about 60 kilograms, which is actually not too bad for a 3D structure this big. Uh, and the heaviest part really is a sheet metal. Uh, because the weight is the biggest enemy, uh, I want to go a little bit thinner, probably around 1.5 mil thickness of uh, aluminium sheet. And, um, and for that reason, I actually put more cross members uh, to make sure the sheet is fully supported. All right, so that basically is the design of the canopy. Um, let's head to the shed and cut some aluminium. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So, here's the 
is our first step of making canopy? Uh, yeah, so basically uh, I'm, I'm trying to build a jack up and jack off canopy. Uh, so, it's a removable canopy with a lifting mechanism. Uh, we need some slots on the side. So basically we've got some pre-cut aluminium. That one is a full width, uh, 1890 millimeters uh, square, square section, SH, something like that, square hollow section. Uh, that one there needs to line up with this slot there, so I can do a quick, uh, quick mount by using bolts. Uh, we just noticed that this section may be a little bit too long uh, because that needs to line up with this little slot as well. So the canopy might be uh, might be 40 millimeters shorter than we expect. But that is a very, very um, quite a small yeah, quite a um, small space to hmm. sacrifice. So it, that is all right. So what is the final reading? Yeah, that should be around somewhere there anyway. Uh, not not quite 12, 1200 millimeter, uh, but I think it will still work work out all right. So use less material, a little bit lighter. Probably won't make much difference to be honest with you, but. I think this will work out all right. Okay. Yeah. So just uh, using a stop block to make sure I cut out the um, the sections is well, make, unnecessary make sure they're, they're section. E yeah, they're all they're all equal. Hmm. Um, now you may wonder where this one comes from. Uh, I'll put a link in the video. Uh, no, actually I haven't got one, but I made it myself. So you make things yourself to, for, for yourself to use. I actually haven't got a video, sorry mate. Right, so what are we doing now? Yeah, just finished cutting the two sides. So mm -hmm. they are basically identical. Yeah. Um, before I zap them together, I'll just have to make sure that I've done things correctly. Yeah. I've, we've learned enough mistakes. So always bring back to the workpiece and test it before you actually stick them together. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, I just read that. So that, that's fine. There's another piece that just goes here. That just goes here. They just slide in perfectly. That is right. So you can see that there, there's a bit of excess in here. Uh, the design was meant to this part was meant to come all the way out in the design but we forgot about this part of the tray so that, that is something that you can't really you can't really uh, oh can't really predict uh, and it always happens you know fabrication custom stuff it always happens there are stuff that even though you put things in drawings in the computer there will always be things that you can't see so this is one of them uh, but that's fine. It's again, it's a small sacrifice. It's like a couple of centimeter, so it's not too bad. Now, uh, the next step is to tack well all this together. I call I call it zapping, zapping them together, uh, and let's put it back here. Uh, oh, and also there is another step uh, for the mount. How exactly do we do we mount it on the tray? When, when, before we actually weld them together, 
we have to make some mount holes right inside and the beauty of it is allow, allowing me to mount it easily and it is easily accessible from here okay All right, basically, um, we've tested uh, that fits all right, and I mentioned about a hole for mount, for the, for the mount. Uh, so that's the hole, I think it's a 16 mil diameter hole. That basically goes upside down, like so. So the bolt can basically go in. I'll, 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 um, I'll deburr all these sharp pieces in a the hole there and basically the bolt just goes straight in so basically in the same spot around here I'll, I'll drill a hole once this is all completed so the bolt just goes straight uh, well sandwich these two pieces together Oh, this thing is light. Yeah. Let's test it. Uh, again, as I said, we've learned our mistakes, so we must test it. Let's see. Oh! <gasps> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alright, this is perfect. So this is basically tech well, or I call it I call it zap zap um, zapping it. So this is exactly where we want it. It's perfect. And I've got a hole drilled at the bottom, so we can put a bolt through, and we'll we'll put in another hole in here uh, on the tray. That is going to be very hard to drill in because there's got a 2.5 mil steel and also another 2 mil aluminium. But we'll get there. And this thing has turned out to be fantastic. I love it. So, good day everyone. Uh, back to the shed again. Uh, so, last time we've done the main body frame, uh, the next step is to put the cross members in. Uh, so I'll be cutting some aluminium now and zip weld them together. So Pei's not here today. Uh, I'll have to record myself. Um, so on my own. I'm just quickly show you a skill that I've picked up through my learning uh, that is actually quite important for the accuracy of uh, fabrication. Now, so you see I'm trying to do this, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, I, I need the base part of these two tubes to be to be flushed together so uh, it doesn't it doesn't protrude. Uh, so it's flat to touch at the base. Now, the, the skill that I've used is that you have to use something to clamp it. Uh, so this is basically, for example, this is a 50 by 50, that is a 25 by 25. All you need to do is to clamp another piece of 25 by 25, perhaps ideally a different material. And in this case, they obviously 25 times two becomes 50 and you clamp them together the base of that, I can be sure, the base is flush. All right, I'll get back to my tech welding.
Right, um, so what I've done in previous few sections, uh, well, especially this foundation of the canopy, uh, all tech welded. Pretty alright, pretty solid at the moment. Uh, so this is basically the face. That is a, oh, that is a bottom. Um, so the next step is to grind everything flat at the base so that the whole thing sit flush on the ground. Alright, that'll be that'll be the next step. I'll start working. Are you okay? <laughs> what is our next step? Our next step is to build the legs. Uh, so as you see now, all these are nice and flat. Uh, I can ensure the base sits, sits really flat on the ground or on the track. Um, so we'll leave this aside for now and start building the legs. Come around this way. Uh, so we've printed out a few pages of the design, the most important uh, places with measurements. Uh, that's basically what I need to build now. Uh, a couple of slots in here for the lift-off mechanism. Uh, and that's called a leg. Four of them. Uh, all tech welded together uh, and then we'll build all the fruits inside. What are you doing now, B? Um, let's put that aside. So I need 700 millimeters. Uh, cut out a section of 700 millimeters. Uh, actually, four of them. And then I'll need four of the 100. Four, 700, four, 100. All right, let's cut some aluminium. What are you doing now, B? Just cleaning up the aluminium before I start tacking them together. So that's basically a leg. One leg looks like that. If you just look at that exactly like this, I wonder if you can actually hear me. So that, that thing is what I'm making. Alright folks, I've made a mistake, uh, I got too carried away when I did the tech welds. So that is basically done, it looks pretty good, apart from this part. What happened? If you, if you check, I mean, it, it, I, can, I, I can still make mistakes, even when there is a picture to follow. So that is basically what it is, and I've made a mistake, I, I looked at this and I uh, I kept looking down onto this leg. Uh, it's meant to be like this, right? So I basically made a mistake by uh, kind of twisting, yeah, yeah, pointing this 90 degree in the wrong way. So what we are going to do to fix it is to to cut another 45 degree 
uh, so that this corner becomes a compound, a compound 90 degree corner. So x, y, z, uh, if you know what I mean. I'll show you. I'll show you what. So everything sort of joined together. We worked out what sort of degree to cut. Okay. Right. Yeah, guys, this is a very important step. Um, we really have to think this through very carefully. Because if I mess this up, I have to start everything again. Not everything, the base platform is fine, but all these poles. Yes, I have to start every or all of these again. <laughs> okay. Um, that one point in. So, yeah. Can't get this wrong again. Finger crossed. Yeah. Four to five. Mm. It's too easy. Too easy to get it, get it wrong. Too easy. Oh. You sure? Okay. Are they straight? Yeah, good. Okay. Oh, so the last piece of this hole can't get that wrong. There's no way that can be wrong. Then just make sure everything is nice and straight. Uh, in this case, I don't think it is. Where's the other one? Oh, at the bottom. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I'm quite happy about that.
Alright, good morning folks. Uh, another day of canopy build. Uh, so yesterday I've built uh, the sides of the canopy. Uh, so yesterday I called them legs, but I think probably uh, is more accurately referring them to the sides of the canopy. So these are the sides. Um, so now what I'm, I'll, I'll be doing today, the first thing, we'll be joining them onto the canopy base. Uh, but to do that accurately, I do I do actually have to make all the um, the top part of the canopy as well, uh, just to make sure things are equally distributed. Uh, you know, when you weld, things get distorted, they, uh, the angles changed, so I'll have to make sure everything is the right angle. Alright, let's get to work. I'll talk to you later. So basically this side goes into this corner. Uh, to put this on, I actually have to finish weld this joint here first. And that's why I've ground I've ground it flat uh, to be able to fit this on. Um, but as a matter of fact, I actually need to weld this first uh, and then grind it flat again. To, before I actually put this side on otherwise uh, I would not be able to access this side anymore so I think it's probably a good thing to weld it first all right let's do it Um, I've done a bit of cutting. There's a fair bit of cutting that I've done. Uh, so basically I've made these uh, the top width of this canopy. That's right there. Now, I've come across this biggest difficulty because uh, I'm here today in the shed by myself. No one's here to help me. So what can I do to put this on there? Tap well them together. When you have no one to help yourself, masking tape may be the way to go. I was told masking tape could be used for aluminium welding uh, because obviously you can't use magnets like when you weld steel. So masking tape could be your friend. I'm going to give this a go. I've never tried this before, but um, I hope that works. At least it holds uh, the post in place. Uh, before I start using the clamps. Alright, let's get to work. Alright, check this out everyone. Uh, that's what I've done at the moment. I mean, you, you sort of understand why it won't stand up there perfectly because I've made this compound 90 degree hole. So, that's what I meant yesterday when I said the X Y and Z. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, in order to make a joinery like this, uh, you have to cut the 45 degrees a couple of times in the correct uh, place. Um, yeah, things like that. So I think this will hold for now. Um, well, let's hope that it holds pretty okay. I might put a couple of tags uh, to make sure that it won't fall. <laughs> All right, so basically I'm in a step of uncertainty. I'm not too sure what to do next. I mean, I've, I've pretty much, uh, they're not tagged yet. Well, there is only one that was tagged welded. Uh, but all the rest of the corners, they are all just stuck together using masking tape. I, I found they are really good tools for aluminum welding. Um, it's not perfectly accurate, I mean, 
you can see i'm not too sure if you can see those but i think this is a really big gap in here but i mean you, you can see the general shape um, the era i believe is acceptable uh, so i don't know what to do next maybe i should tech weld them and then add all the um, all the gusset supports inside so what happened um okay so as you can see we've got everything uh masking tech stuck together uh and it's not working because none, none of these are none of these are actually uh, accurate stationary they, they, they actually all move so there is no way of knowing uh, which corner is accurate uh, so after a bit of discussion we think uh, the best way to do so is to start from somewhere that is accurate okay uh, so that's why we think it's probably a good idea to start from here since we know these are 800 uh, in in the space between so these two are actually parallel to each other uh, so what we're going to do now we take off all the masking tape luckily they're not tech weld together yet uh, so we'll take everything off we'll start from here uh, so basically what we will be doing is <coughs> We'll make sure all these are 90 degree. So you see, as you see now, they are, they are even though they're clamped together, uh, this was put on yesterday, it's not 90 degree. And on that side, so that side is bigger than 90, this side is less than 90, clearly. So we're going to correct that. We'll make sure this space stays in between. So um, the 550 remains the same. Uh, this way we'll start, um, we, we can make sure that this is accurate, this is an accurate reference point. So once this is tap welded, um, we, can, we can put a straight edge on the side so that the corner of this beam uh, will line up the bottom. And if not basically vice versa, we'll make sure everything is 90 in all direction. Um, and we'll basically do the next beam, do the next brace, things like that. All right, let's get to work.
Thank you. That's very kind of you. 